Good afternoon. I'm in my favorite place in the entire world, under the bus, again. Um, this is the first project I've done since I had my accident with a table saw, um, which is healing up nicely right now. It just looks really ugly. Um, but what am I doing under here? I am installing these holding tank heaters. Um, they don't really heat up the tank very much, but they prevent them from freezing. Um, so with the flip of a switch, I should be able to warm up my tanks. Uh, there's a couple of things that I'm a little worried about. One, uh, it has to stick to the bottom as close to uh, any kind of pipe outlet that you've got. So on, on the freshwater tank, which is this one, I'm gonna get it as close to this as possible. So it's gotta be stuck right there. Um, I'm a little worried about it interfering with my tank senders that read the level of fluid in the tank, which are right here. I'm also a little bit worried about the weight. Um, these tanks, when they're full, weigh over 800 pounds, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, right in the middle, there's not really a lot of pressure. Like, this tank is half full right now. Um, and I can push, I can push up the bottom, but it's still going to be some stress on the tank heater itself. So I'm a little worried that that won't work. And then also this is not supposed to be in contact with a conductive material. I think that means on the other side, so it can't be like a metal tank. It won't heat up like a metal tank. Um, but there are these metal bars that might interfere with the operation. I've wiped down the bottom of the tank, made it nice and clean, so we got a good surface to adhere to. And now I gotta slip this up underneath and then get ready to stick it to the tank. Like most projects in the bus, this is a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Um, I actually had to loosen these supports that are under the bus a bit. I'm still working on getting this on here. It doesn't look like it's getting too much pressure on it. I mean, obviously it's gonna have some pressure on it because of the, the water in the middle, but most of the, the weight seems to be distributed at the corners of the tank. I'm going to completely remove this bar, or at least lower it down enough so that I can slip the rest of it underneath, and that one will be installed. The first pad is on the freshwater tank and it is all clamped up and uh, I had to, I put it on, realized that I left some of the tape, the paper on, had to undo it, pull it down, pull all that tape off and re-adhere it to the, the tank and it was pretty forgiving for having to do that but uh, yeah you don't want to have to go through that. So make sure you get all the tape off, all this uh, paper stuff off the first time. That's what it looks like. So what I had done is I ripped off the tape but there's another piece of paper there that needs to be ripped off and there's more adhesive under that. That's what needs to be flush against the, the tank. So my mistake but uh, it seems to be holding pretty well. Again most of the stress seems to be on the corners so I think this will be okay. Hopefully the gray water tank will be a little bit easier. We got this big space here, which is right where the um, the downspout is. I only need to remove two of these, and uh, I can just stick it right up under the tank. All right, since this tank is mostly empty, I uh, just dropped two of the supports here and here, and uh, I'm going to stick the pad carefully right up underneath that after I remove all the tape and uh, as close to this outlet as possible. That one went a lot smoother. Uh, it's all properly adhered. Alright so this is another day. Uh, Eric and I are working on installing the switch for the heaters. There's going to be two switches right here but first I got to put a junction box in. So I've cut some holes at the corners and I'm going to cut out that shape, pop in the junction box. Eric is working on the uh, switch box or the switch faceplate 
and then we wire it up. So Eric is installing the switches, but there's nothing wired to them right now. This is just for looks. All right, I'm under the bus wiring the last bits here. Got to connect the the uh, heaters to the switch. This goes to the switch, and this one goes to the batteries. So um, after this, we just have to shrink wrap the connections and put a fuse on, and it is ready to go. I can't test this system until it gets to below freezing, which it may or may not do here in the Pacific Northwest. So I am waiting until some freezing happens to actually turn these guys on. All right, so we're pulled over in the uh, Silver Island Mountains right now, right next to the Bonneville Salt Flats. Jess and Julien are putting dinner together. Got a fire going. They're using all the power. Hey. <laughs> all the power. They're using 19.5 amps of power right now. A lot of that has to do with the tank heaters because it's 21 degrees outside. Shit. So we have to keep the heaters from freezing. Or we gotta keep the tanks from freezing. <laughs> um, now I'm going to do what I came here for. <laughs> Damn. That's right. Is that magnetic? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so right now we woke up to a little bit of issue with the pipes. So that's kind of been our learning curve of winterizing our bus. And obviously we live in a place that doesn't go below freezing very often. So we're not thinking about it as hard as we should. And then out here in Utah, we dropped in the teens last night. So I just made some hot tea. But then the water went out, so I'm using that to hot, steam the hot tea to give it a steam bath, see if this freezes some stuff up. This is a special edition video. I am at Schoolie Palooza, and uh, on this trip we've had problems with uh, pipes freezing over. It's like, what, 75 degrees outside right now, yeah. but up north it's really freaking cold. And so I've been on a quest to find 12 volt heat tape, which apparently nobody has. So I ordered directly from a manufacturer in Minnesota, and they have sent it to a place that's down the road about 20 minutes away. And I picked it up at some random person's house, which is really a, a business, but... Anyway, I have it now. 12 volt heat tape. And so I'm going to install it on the line, and uh, hopefully... Everything will be good in the world. This is a bit of theme of the trip. Get this 12 volt heat tape installed. All right, so down under the bus, this is the water line that froze. We have the, the tank heater right here, conveniently with oversized wires um, attached to the tank. Uh, you can see the tank heater is this black thing up under here. So I'm going to tap into this circuit and then run the heat tape that I've got here from the bottom all the way up to where it goes into the bus. Sorry. Take a look right in there. So first of all, it comes with instructions, but the instructions are they have nothing, it doesn't say anything. <laughs> There's no like actual instructions, it's just uh, pictures. And they're a little bit indecipherable, but I'm just gonna go through it really carefully and kind of do what looks about right and hope, hope for the best. So let's dive into this. Step one, I gotta de-sleeve this much of the uh, heat tape right down to this little mar right here. All right, so I'm in the process of uh, de-sleeving this thing down to the, the proper size and 
removing this outer layer of wire which is more of a ground um, right down to the nub just like this picture and uh, then I got to cut away a little bit more all right I'm getting closer I have de-sleeved it down to here and then I am twisting up the wire the grounding wire and uh, got to cut off a little bit more of this under insulation to get it ready for the next part all right so I've got the heat tape pretty much stripped the way it's supposed to be I did cut this one a little bit short but uh, I'll just cut the the wire housing a little bit short too this came this was something I had to order uh, separately, but it's a termination and splicing kit. It just basically is gonna, I'm gonna fit this whole thing in there and uh, with silicone hold it in, and then it gives me something to attach my wire to. All right, so I've got the uh, silicone in the end of this thing, and I'm gonna feed the wire end through that. Okay, so I've got the wires pretty much set up. I put some electrical tape around it and then I terminated it according to the instructions. So this is the length that I'm going to be putting in with my uh, water pipe. And hopefully it's enough to keep it from freezing. Okay, so I've got the uh, wire run in here. You can see it. Let's see. So there's the uh, heat tape. There's my water line. And then we've got this insulation. I'm going to have to like tighten it up just a little bit here. But uh, it runs all the way up. And then you can see what looks like an eraser. Uh, let's get you in there. That eraser thing is the termination of the heat tape. And so I kind of turned it away. I'll probably flip it around so it's going at least kind of covering that a little bit of blue right there and so I'm splicing in to my heater wire right now and uh, trying to figure out the best way to do that I got the positive on and I just need to get the negative and we'll be ready to go okay I wanted to do a quick recap of the antifreeze system in the bus the tank heaters and the 12 volt heat tape have been working great we haven't had anything freeze since the last time that we took the bus out. Uh, after it was installed, we have had to use it a few times and I've been able to turn it on, go outside and kind of feel around on the heat tape and on the, on the pad. And I can feel some heat coming off of it, uh, just enough to kind of keep it from freezing. So it kind of takes that edge off. Uh, it uses a lot of power. When both of them are on, it, t it draws about 20 amps, which is, quite a lot when you don't have uh, when you're a hundred percent on so working off of battery and solar energy um, but it's it, it's not enough to drain the system over the course of one one night so uh, the lowest we've been able to draw the battery down has been about 69 percent which is pretty close to zero because you can only use about half of your capacity um, but that was with the, the water, the tank heaters being on all night in very, very cold temperatures. Uh, but like I said, since the system has been installed and since the 12 volt heat tape has been on there, uh, no more freezing, no more freezing of the pipe. Uh, the tanks, as far as I know, have never frozen. Uh, and I have also added an additional plumbing circuit that I'll show you in a moment. Uh, that we also use in case of that we could use in case of an emergency uh, so overall I'm very satisfied with how the system has worked out and I'm proud to say that it's winter ready all right the last piece of the puzzle is this white line labeled emergency right here uh, you can see it's connected to my hot water line and it runs down into my fresh water fill after the valve that I usually use when I am filling the freshwater tanks. So the freshwater is normally hooked up right here for the city water, it comes in, goes down, and then I pull that valve to allow water to go into the freshwater tank if I wanna fill it up from the city water. Um, so this comes in right after that. The idea is if we're in a really, really cold situation and the tank heaters are just not able to keep up with it, I can turn this valve and it start it what it does is it turns on the the water heater and starts dumping hot water 
down into the freshwater tank. So if I'm in a really tough situation, go ahead, turn that thing on, and uh, it should hopefully, over time, bring the temperature of the uh, freshwater tank up above freezing or to a more comfortable temperature. The downside is it takes a lot of propane to do that, and you're running a lot of power from the, you know, the pump is, is working hard. Um, so that's why it's an emergency-only situation. Um, but it's nice to have that. I got this idea from the Broccoli Bus. They have a whole system that's all automatic, like at a certain temperature, it automatically engages and opens a solenoid. And uh, yeah, uh, you don't need to go that crazy. So I have a, a thermometer that can tell me what the temperature is inside and outside the bus. And when it gets down to a dangerous level, I can always flip the emergency switch and try to bring that temperature up. All right, the last little bit that I wanted to talk to you about was showering in sub-zero temperatures. Despite all of these little add-ons that we have, the tank heater, the 12 volt heat tape, um, they don't bring the water up to a comfortable temperature. Uh, the wa that's what the, the water heater is for. So although we, ha we don't have to worry about freezing anymore, when we are in sub-zero temperatures and we try to take a shower, uh, the hot water heat or the water heater can only bring the temperature up so far let's say 40 degrees. So if the water outside, if the temperature outside is 60 degrees, you get a 100 degree shower, that's a pretty comfortable temperature. Um, I don't know if it's actually 40, I think that it, it, it actually uh, calibrates to a, whatever you adjust it, the, the, the heat to. But um, when you're in sub-zero temperatures, the flow rate of the water going through the hot water heater is a little bit too high for the hot water heater to keep up with it and it can't raise the temperature like 100 degrees so if we're uh let's say that we're just above freezing we're at like 34 degrees um you can only expect to get maybe 70 70 degrees out of the the faucet which is you know lukewarm cold not not that great so you could shower and it would be more comfortable than just cold water but you can't expect that this whole system is going to make everything comfortable. Um, but, you know, it's not a residential system. There's always trade-offs for trying to be off-grid. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let me know if anybody has any questions about this antifreeze system, and I'll keep trying to put some more videos out there.